Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. When I sat down with Mike Mason a few weeks ago, I asked him about the new Malleus Monstorum book, and also about the difficulties that come with describing the indescribable creatures of the Cthulhu Mythos. This clip starts right after I asked him, what do you want to say about Malleus Monstorum? I hope you enjoy. Um, I guess um, the Malleus Monstorum, which is a two volume slipcase set, um, is is at its heart the the kind of the number one resource for you know monsters and great old ones alien gods in the Call of Cthulhu game um, and um, and so what you have is volume one which is um, pretty much all the kind of monsters that come that can be used within the game uh, the majority of the book is devoted to you know Cthulhu mythos monsters like you know deep ones and and Shogos and, and all that kind of thing. Um, but what we've done, we've you know we've expanded upon a lot of those kind of entries out of the rule book, um, and also you know um, really widened the number of monsters there are. It's obviously based on the original Malleus Monstrum book that cares and published some years ago that was uh, put together by Scott David Alalowski, and uh, we've taken Scott's work and uh, used it as a great foundation to you know to update for the new edition of the game, but to to add further refinements and, and more details. You know more kind of cool background stuff and information in um and that really comes to a head in the second volume which is the uh the book about the kind of the you know the alien deities um and so we go you know from a to z through many of the different kind of great old ones and elder gods and and strange beings that are godlike in the cthulhu mythos and so we have all the classics in there like cthulhu and hastor and you know and uh, azathoth but we've got many, many others as well um, that you know that have you know appeared in fiction or in the game or you know over the many years that uh, it's been out. And um, there's a lot of new information in the deity stuff. A lot because deities aren't necessarily creatures you have you know on the gaming table every week. You know they're they're major events if they ever show up. But what the deities do, like we were just um, kind of saying with uh, uh, Call of Cthulhu, that it has an effect on people. So Cthulhu dream, Cthulhu's dreams can affect people. Um, many other kind of, uh, of these kind of uh, mythos deities, they have this effect on people uh, in different ways and, and to do different things. So they can become, um, you know, plot devices in a, in a sense. So each, each of their own kind of particular quirks that you can use to build a story from. Uh, so it's not just about, you know, summoning these things. But the effect these things can have on humanity at the end of the day, you know, based in the game. And so um, it brings all this together with wonderful artwork by uh, Loic Muzi. And um, they're kind of like a, an indispensable resource, really. It's a bit like the um, Grand Grimoire of Cthulhu Mythos Magic, which collects many spells together in one reference book. The, the, the Malleus Monsterum does the same for monsters. Um, and also has loads of uh, additional kind of guidance and advice on if you want to make your own monsters and gods up. There's loads of, uh, you know, uh, advice to uh, to design design your own kind of horrors from the mythos too. So it throws out all this information about the creatures themselves, but also narrative information, how to weave them into a story, what you might expect and how to riff on them and how to create your own. That's really cool. How, how did you tackle starting a project like that from a writing perspective? Um, well, I mean, we were very fortunate that Scott had obviously done the original book, so we had a, a foundation to work from. Um, but um, particularly with the alien gods, there are many, you know, it, you know even in, within uh, Lovecraft's own writing, he, can, he contradicts himself all the time in terms of this is this thing one day and then another story, it's something else. And, and, um, and so I took that as the basis that actually there is no one, in, if, if you look at these alien beings from a human perspective there is no one answer we because ultimately we can't comprehend them in their totality we only can see a portion of them you know maybe our limited perceptions only can perceive them within the dimensions that we can perceive but they exist in higher dimensions too so we may only be seeing fractions or portions of these creatures um, and that's just on a kind of a, a physical level of what we can see let alone anything else in their powers and abilities and agendas. So um, what I tried to do was to throw in um, numerous conflicting 
or divergent information about a single entity and say, look, if you read the Necronomicon, this says this about Azatar. But if you read, um, you know, for instance, the Revelations of Glarki, it, it says this and they, they're not the same. Which one's right? Well, we don't know. So here are both. And so um, it's kind of saying they're open to interpretation. Here's some different interpretations you can use as a keeper to, to kind of, you know, build on the bits that kind of connect or you're interested in and build stories from. And, um, and they can also be used as kind of pieces of information in terms of investigator research. Say, look, you, know, you can use these conflicting information to actually make the game interesting. You know, to say there isn't, as a thought, isn't one thing, it's many things. Here, here are things it could be. Which which angle are we going to go down? Which 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 route? So um, so it was a lot of research, looking at you know what people had written, what people had used in games and fiction, uh, and and also just sitting down and kind of like you know thinking um, some new angles from my own perspective in that way. And so each of the monsters is presented. Each, sorry, each of the gods is presented um, with this range of ideas. Really, they are they are basically each monster god is a is a is a caseload of ideas that kind of connect together, but um, you can draw any one strand out and use that for your scenario or campaign. And so, um, you know, there's information on you know their different cults and how their cultists kind of view them or what their cultists may do. Uh, there's kind of like uh, information on their auras. You know, if you're in the presence of something touched by one of these deities. What would it feel like? You know, does it feel like is the air electric? Is the air on fire? Does it feel cold? So lots of kind of sensory stuff in there as well to help to help the keeper to kind of describe and build, you know, scenes around these kind of things because they're not always easy to you know get a grip on in that way.